You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Flutter of parenting advice and overcome the pressure to be a perfect mom and raise perfect kids. Welcome to Moms Without Worry with host Dr. Karen Cassidy. Karen encourages you to embrace the messy hilarity of parenting by explaining the scientific strategies that will help you and your kids thrive with authenticity, joy, and good humor. So please welcome the host of Moms Without Worry, Karen Cassidy. Welcome to Moms Without Worry. I'm your host, Dr. Karen Cassidy, and you are on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio Live. Have you ever wondered what happened to your peace of mind between your vow to be the best mom ever and all the dirty diapers, preschool playdates, homework projects, and teen drama? Have you secretly wished that you could move to a magic country that has no tantrums in public? Have you ever gone online about a parenting problem and been confused by all the contradictory advice and opinions or worried if your style of parenting is somehow bad for your kid? Well, if you answered yes to any of these questions, then you are in the right place. So I want you to grab your latte or your tea or your COVID cocktail and sit down and relax and get ready to join me and my guest as we all develop clarity and unshakable self-confidence in our parenting and get comfortable raising our kids based on who they really are instead of who others say they should be. I want you to remember to please join me on the Facebook Moms Without Worry community group where you can watch free videos on the latest best advice on parenting and becoming a mom without worry. And you can also download the weekly challenge sheet from this show that gives you the hot tips that you're going to get today from our special guest. And then if you want to call in and you're listening live and you want to make some comments or share your stories or ask some questions, you can dial 866 866- Four five one one four five one. Again, that number is eight six six four five one one four five one. So now I want to introduce our special guest, Dr. April. Uh, April is it Seifert or Seifert? I'm sorry, I forgot to ask it's you. Seifert. Seifert, yes, no Dr. April Seifert. Okay, get that right, Dr. April Seifert. And Dr. April Seifert is someone who intimately knows the importance of the life we're all going to live. After losing her father to colon cancer at the age of 11 and being diagnosed with multiple sclerosis at age 14, April became keenly aware that time and health are some of the most valuable gifts that we have and life is meant to be lived actively and to the fullest. Today, April helps people do just that. She's the co-founder of Peak Mind, the Center for Psychological Strength. And April helps people cultivate the confidence, resilience, and mental flexibility they need to thrive through life's ups and downs. Using techniques from the field of life design and psychology, April helps people align their lives to the person they truly are in order to become active participants in their own lives. April holds a Ph.D. in social cognitive psychology from the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. She's a serial entrepreneur. She's the host of the really popular Building Psychological Strength podcast, which I love listening to. She's married to an ER physician who she tells us is quite the hunk. So we'd like some proof of that, April. And she's mom (laughs) to two strong, independent girls. And she's also a TED Talker. So you can see her TED Talk. I'll put a link to that on the challenge sheet today. So April, welcome to Moms Without Worry. 
I am so thrilled to be here. I feel like I am here with my tribe of people. I completely resonate with everything that you said in your intro, and I can't wait to dive in. Fantastic. Well, let's let's dive right in because, you know, right now we are living in a time that I think is showing all of us our most vulnerable aspects of ourselves. We have a world pandemic that's making us think about life and death and family and relationships. We have uh, incredible um, racial unrest that's teaching us about our systemic racism and our own um, accidental participation in that. And it's a time where I think people and, and mothers especially are thinking about, you know, how can I really raise human beings who are good people and uh, who leave the world a better place uh, because of their lives as opposed to just um, accidentally going along with things? So one of the things I'd love for you to tell us about is, you know, what about your early life experiences challenged you to do something more in terms of thinking about who you were and what you wanted to do and how you wanted to go about living? You know, you touched on two experiences in my introduction that were very formative for me. Obviously, losing a parent at the young age of 11 and then being diagnosed with an incurable, very unpredictable condition at age 14, the ripple effect from that, the immediate ripple effect, is what you would expect. There's a lot of grief. There's a lot of adjustment, all of the things that you would expect to happen to someone when they go through those two circumstances did. But the most formative thing, truthfully, that came out of those experiences happened much later. I was in graduate school. I was sitting at my desk and I talk about this a bit in my TED talk, writing mm -hmm. a paper for my PhD program. And on the outside, it looked like I was killing life. I was getting mm -hmm. a PhD. I had this successful line of research. And I realized, though, that inside of me were all of these goals and all of these things that I wanted to try and that I wanted to do. But if I was honest, the reason why I wasn't doing them is because I thought that I would do them imperfectly and that people mm. would see and they would judge me. And what happened in that moment is I remembered my dad and the fact that his life and mm -hmm. his ability to experience life was over. And I also thought about myself when my MS was at its worst and I was paralyzed and I was blind and I couldn't go to school and everything was really difficult. I remembered that person and a yeah. question popped into my head that changed my life forever. And that was, what would my dad or what would you in those circumstances, what would those people give for the chance that I'm wasting today? Mm. And it just wow. hit me and I realized it doesn't matter if you do it imperfectly. You need to live your life authentically and fully and with vibrance and with life and be true to who you are because you're only getting one shot. So truly those two experiences had a ripple effect on my life that I never could have imagined. Yeah, that that is beautiful. Um, you know, because I think one thing that happens to a lot of us is we take life for granted and uh, and I can remember when I was in graduate school, I had four friends die within the span of a year. And some were tragic car accidents, other was tragic cancer. And it's interesting, it had that effect on me because I remember sitting down one day and going, you know, if I knew I was dying in a year, would I be doing what I'm doing right now? You know, does, does, mm -hmm. does my study matter that much, that all the things I'm doing? And it was a very powerful question that uh, has meant a lot to me as I go on. It's like this, uh, you know, you don't have to get it right. You just have to really be on track <laughs> and be doing something that yeah. matters to you. And that, yeah. that that's really a tough question. Um, you know, when you think about your past experience, um, what would you say, you know, because this is one thing that comes up with a lot of mothers that I work with, is if something really difficult happens to their child, such as a parent dies, a grandparent dies, um, a friend dies, uh, you know, they get diagnosed with an anxiety disorder or a developmental disorder, then 
then mothers tend to feel like this is a tragedy and, and they get stuck at that point. What would you say to them about what the advantages are of the fact that their child is experiencing something really, really challenging? Think about life. Life is not smooth. Their life, long after they leave your, your home and they move out onto their own, their life will not be smooth. It will not be free yeah. of difficulty and free of turmoil. What those situations teach us or have the opportunity to teach us is that it is possible to thrive, to grow, to learn in any circumstances, even the most difficult. So I want to say to those moms, I'm your kids decades later, and it is possible to live a full life and thrive. I love that. We are going to take a quick break. So hang on and come back and you're going to get a chance to hear Dr. April tell us about how to thrive in any circumstance. I'm Dr. Karen Cassidy on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio Live. Mike Zorick, a three-time California state champion in Greco-Roman wrestling at 114 pounds. Mike, blind since birth, was born in Hartford, Connecticut. He was a six-time national placer, including two seconds, two-thirds, and two-fourths. He also won the Veterans Folk Style Wrestling twice at 152 two pounds in all these tournaments he was the only blind competitor nancy zorick a creative spirit whose talents have taken her to the stage and into galleries and exhibitions in several states her father a commercial artist who shared his instruments with his daughter and helped her fine-tune her natural abilities influenced her decision to follow in his footsteps miss zorick has enjoyed a fruitful career doing what she loves listen saturday mornings at 12 Eastern for the Nancy and Mike Show for heartwarming stories and interesting talk on the BBM Global Network. Welcome back. I know you are some sharp cookies who are listening because you're daring to change your life and to take in this top notch, hot off the press scientific information about how to thrive no matter what. And boy, during this pandemic and racial unrest, this is a time where we all need this. So April, I'd, I'd love it, you know, because I know you're like me, where you're a, a fellow science junkie um, and you just love anything that helps us leverage the way our bodies work and our brains work. Could you tell us, um, you know, What is it about the human body and the human mind that it needs to learn the strategies that you teach people in order to manage difficult experiences? I love that you you worded it exactly like that, because I'm going to let you in on perhaps the saddest joke of all time. (laughs) And that is we have this our minds are powerful, but they're not that sophisticated and I say it that way because they're extremely powerful. They shape our worldview. They're the lens through which we live life. They impact our behavior, our thoughts, our feelings, so many things, right? That is powerful. But our minds at their basic core largely run on a set of habits or Mm -hmm. run on a set of think automatic patterns that really developed long before we find ourselves in the environment and the culture that we're in right now. And I say it's kind of a sick joke because our mind's natural tendency as a result of that is to go in a direction that frankly is not very helpful given our current Mm -hmm. circumstances. And I'll give you a quick example. Yeah. One of our mind's biggest goals is to keep us safe and alive while expending the least amount of energy possible. So our mind's got a big job, right? It has to take in all this information all day long and it has to be able to process and deliberate and control our actions and keep us breathing and do all of these crazy things, right? So much that our brain does that it has to reserve energy in order to do all of that. It tends to, and here's one example, look for negativity and look for threats just as Mm -hmm. a general rule. So as a general rule, we are predisposed to have a negativity bias in our minds 
unless we tell it to do otherwise. So if you think about what that does to your life experience, if you're showing up to the table immediately with this hardware that is telling you, look for negative things, look for negative things, you and I both know whatever you look for in a situation, you're going to find. And if we approach a situation with that lens, we're more likely to see negative events. We're more likely to assume that whatever outcome of what we're in is going to be a negative one or a catastrophic one. So a lot of what yeah. we teach in Peak Mind, we call it the Center for Psychological Strengths because there are certain think strengths building exercises that you can do that helps you turn the Titanic away from the direction where it is not helpful, away yeah. from, in this example, this negativity bias towards something that is more helpful given the environment and the culture that we live in today. Yeah. So that's how, you know, I, I'm sure every mom has had this happen where your kid comes home from school and says, no one likes me. I don't have any friends. Um, everybody hates me. And you, the mom, are aware of the fact uh, the day before they had quite a few friends, thank you. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. you know, I think the problem for moms, if you don't understand that about your kid, it's way easy to overreact also because of your negativity bias. And right. I, I mean, see, think about yeah. any time you've, you've created something, right? Like you've written mm -hmm. something or you made something or whatever. And 15 people tell you how much they love it and how wonderful it is. And you get one even moderately negative comment. And that's the one you focus on. What? It's this mm -hmm. negativity bias. And it's a great example with your kids too, where none of us are immune to, to it. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I see, you know, I think I see with women, this happens a lot, you know, with moms where, um, one person makes some comment to them that isn't completely enthusiastic and then they just feel crushed and they completely forget about all the other wonderful affirmation they've gotten from other friends. And, and then they're just feeling awful when it just doesn't make sense to do that. So, you know, what's tough here is, you know, we're, we have this negativity bias, you know, where our brain is on the detect danger you know, and, and kind of the way I describe it to my, uh, you know, people I work with is to say, you know, it's kind of like our brain is hardwired to detect danger. And it has this idea that it's better to recognize a threat and not make a mistake than it is to assume things are okay. You know, and so it's kind of mm -hmm. like having a wolf in your head rather than a golden retriever. Because um, golden retrievers just assume everybody's their friend, and so <laughs> you know, and you and you gotta appreciate that. So you know, in terms of like you mentioned something very interesting about building strength and building different habits. So what does science tell us about what it takes for us to overcome that negativity bias, regardless of what skill we're trying to learn? What what do we have to kind of appreciate and understand about how our mind and bodies work? Our minds work very similarly, and follow me here, I promise I have a point. They work very <laughs> similarly to a basketball player. Think about basketball players, right? There is practice. They go every day, practice a variety of drills, and then there's the NBA championships. No basketball player shows up to the NBA championships and thinks, wow, I'm going to shoot some free throws today probably during this game. I wonder if I'm going to make them or not. That's not when you practice free throws. That's the big game. That's when all of your practice and muscle memory takes over. Mm. Contrast that with your daily practice, your daily basketball practice, where you're shooting the same free throw over and over again. You're paying attention to the arc of your wrist and when you let the ball go and where your fingers are on the ball relative to other you know, places on the ball, et cetera. I'm not a basketball player, even though I'm using this reference. Um, yeah. But... We encourage people that there are a variety of things, and we can talk about a few of them, you know, in this, in this time that we have together. There are a variety of things that we can do on a regular basis. Think free throw practice. We do them when we are not in a situation when we need them. We do them because we're trying to teach our brain, 
I know you want to go down this negativity track, but actually the muscle memory I want you to have is to go down this more helpful track. So we do these practices on a daily basis to say, this is the new habit I want you to cultivate so that when we're in our lives, when tragedy hits, when it's the NBA championship finals, we can execute those better habits, more helpful habits without having to work very hard for them. Oh, fantastic. It's time for another station break. I want you to hang on because we're going to talk about what are some of those ways you can do that practice. This is Dr. Karen Cassidy and my special guest, April, and she's here with us giving us wonderful advice. And you are listening to BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio Live. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality, but it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating? Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, it's like a, a flow inside. You know, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416 529 7429. Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well, be aware. Be magical. Essential Nutrients LLC is the brainchild of entrepreneur Barbara Burns. Inspired by a desire to help others, Barbara worked with a team of scientists to develop unique nutritional liquid supplements with the goal to improve the quality of your life. Glucosamine, zinc, and calcium are essential to well being, and this is the focus of Essential Nutrients LLC. Whether you're a professional athlete, weekend warrior, student, business owner, or homemaker, Essential Nutrients offers products for everyone, including the family pet. And they're easy to take, no pills. Health requires commitment, exercise, a good diet, proper supplementation, and action. So take action today and get your supply of essential liquid nutrients by visiting www.essential-liquids.com. Don't put off your health any longer. Take essential products today and start to measure the difference. Welcome back. I'm Dr. Karen Cassidy, your host on Moms Without Worry, and we are talking about ways to build psychological strength and to thrive in any kind of situation so that you as a mother can have the skills for yourself and for your family. That means you come out of the COVID pandemic, out of all kinds of national crisis and personal crisis thriving. So April, can you tell us, um, you know, what is your top of mind strength building skill that you like to start people on? You know, especially when you think about moms, right? We, mm-hmm. as a as a group of people, and I say this with so much love and with so much experience in this area, we have a lot on our plate and there's a lot to juggle. And when you think about the implications of what we're juggling, it's not small stuff. We're talking about the people we love most in the world depend on us. And mm-hmm. what that does is it sets us up in a situation that we desperately want to perform. And I'm going to use that very broadly, but we want to perform at our best. We want to show up our best. We want to be able to help and provide and guide and nurture and all of that in the best possible way. And those are all great intentions. But unfortunately, we are also humans. And we don't do that sometimes. Sometimes we just can't. Or for whatever reason, things don't go the way that we want them to. And so many times, let's all raise our hands in our house or (laughs) car or wherever you are. I'm raising mine right now. Our tendency in those situations, and we talked about negativity bias, this plays a role. Our tendency tends to be to beat ourselves up 
I am a horrible mom. I can't believe I did that. I have scarred my kid for life. There is some deep seated issue that I have now caused with my kid. Oh my Mm -hmm. gosh, what a terrible parent am I? So if you've ever thought that, please know that I'm speaking directly to you right now. That is our mind's natural tendency. It's to go down this direction that is not helpful. How helpful is that to beat yourself up? Instead, a more helpful direction, and this is the free throw practice that I want you to do on a daily basis. I want you to start learning to practice self-compassion. And I mean something really specific by that. Practicing self-compassion means doing a few things we know from science. Number one, it means acknowledging the circumstances that you're in. Gosh, this is hard. I have a kid who needs me right now. I was on a conference call at the same time. I was up late the night before finishing work. You know, there's so many things going on around me and I am one person trying to do all of this at the same time. Gosh, that's hard. So acknowledge the circumstances you're in. Two, connect to a common humanity. And by that, I mean, what do you think other decent people in the same situation would do? Anyone who was faced with that much pressure in that moment could react in the way that I did. Anyone could do that. And then the third piece of this is to give yourself or project some kindness back onto yourself. You are not a bad person. You're doing the best that you can. We're going to come back and we're going to do this better next time. Or we're going to try to anticipate ways to remove some of this off of the table so we're not in that situation in the next time. But you're doing great. You're doing the best you can. So acknowledge your circumstances, connect to a common humanity, and be kind to yourself. This does not come naturally. It does not come easily. It will feel fake at first. Mm -hmm. Just know this is free throw practice, and you're going to do it over and over and over again in small, easy circumstances so that when you're in really tough circumstances, when you're really being challenged, you can rely on that skill that you built, that muscle that you developed. Yeah, I I mean, I think... You know, one thing that I see a lot of moms tell me is, I don't have the time to do this. You know, I'm too busy. And, uh, you know, what do you say to them? Mm, I love this question. I love this question so much. Because where I see people falling short, and man, social media does not help. Man, other people's (laughs) opinions do not help. You can tell I just get passionate about this. Mm -hmm. If there was a table by me, I'd be banging on it right now. Um, yeah, we conflate quantity with quality. And so what I mean by that is we think that we need to spend every moment with our kids, with our spouse or significant other, whatever, people who are important with us. And we neglect to realize that if you ratcheted down that amount of time that you're spending with your kids, even by 15 minutes and you took that 15 minutes and spent it doing something that allows you to reset, recenter, practice some self-compassion, you know, remind yourself of what your values are and how you want to show up. The quality of that interaction would be so much better. Something I ask myself all the time, a small act that helps me with my kids just based on how my brain works Mm -hmm. Uh, My crazy type A has too much going through it at any given time. At the end of the day, my work day, if I don't wrap up my day, meaning I have my to-do list ready to go for tomorrow, I've reviewed my schedule for tomorrow, I feel like I know what's happening, I feel in control, whatever. If I don't take the time to do that, my interactions with my kids will be distracted. I'll be shorter with them. I'll be a little Mm -hmm. bit more anxious. I'll be more on edge. I'll be more likely to react in a way that I don't want to. Now, what I've learned to ask myself is, April, I know you want to rush home and or rush to daycare and pick your kids up because you feel like the right thing to do, what you should be doing is spending this time with your kids. But how long will it actually take for you to wrap up your day? What's it going to take? 10 minutes? Are you willing to take that 10 minutes with your kids and have the entire evening be laced 
with this anxiety and distraction, or would you rather spend that 10 minutes clearing your mind so you can be there with them? Quality over quantity. Yeah, yeah, you are you are so right because I think somehow in our culture, um, the idea has come in that a, a mother who's really a good mother does everything with her kids, spends all the time. And then, you know, the, the task list has gotten bigger and bigger in terms of doing cool crafts. And, and we even saw this, um, with the quarantine where moms were feeling Mm -hmm. like I have to be a teacher. I have to be an entertainer. I have to be a disciplinarian. I have, I have to do all these things and then discovering they just can't, it's not possible. Um, and that's actually a lack of self-compassion to <laughs> not give yourself the time to be human. This is Dr. Karen Cassidy with my special guest, Dr. April Seifert. And we are going to be back in just a minute. You're listening to BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio Live. Introducing BetterHomeAndGarden.com. That's www.BetterHomeAndGarden.com with just the letter N in Better Home and Garden. BetterHomeAndGarden.com offers you the highest quality products on the market that are environmentally safe and effective, and to make them available to you at the lowest possible prices. BetterHomeAndGarden.com understands that kind of creativity and do-it-yourself attitude. Thus, we developed our website, BetterHomeAndGarden.com. BetterHomeAndGarden.com offers you the following products right online. Bath, bedding, collectibles, craft, sewing and hobby, food and beverage, furniture, home decor, kitchen and dining, lamps and lighting, large appliances, musical instruments, outdoor cooking, patio items, pet supplies, plant and garden, rug and floor coverings, small appliances, travel and luggage, and so much more. Better Home and Garden is an online retailer offering a wide variety of high-quality brand name merchandise at discount prices. Our service is personal and we aim to please. Visit us at www.betterhomeandgarden.com. Make your home your own. Dr. R.C. will share extraordinary resources and services that promote educational success as well as making a difference in the lives of all social workers as well as the lives of children, adolescents, and teens of today. She will have open discussions addressing many of the issues that we face about our youth and how being employed in the uniquely skilled profession of social work for over 18 years has taught invaluable lessons through her personal experiences. She will also provide real life facts, examples, and personal stories that will confirm that why serving as a child advocate is extremely beneficial when addressing the needs of the whole child. Listen live Saturdays, 10 a.m. Eastern on the BBM Global Network and tune in radio as Dr. RC will provide thought-provoking information that will empower, encourage, and strengthen students, families, and communities across our nation. You can also visit her at soarwithkatie.com. I'm Dr. Karen Cassidy with special guest, Dr. April Seifert, co-founder of Peak Mind Center and TED Talker. And we are talking about improving your psychological strength. And we were just talking about self-compassion, about being able to acknowledge the difficulty in your circumstances and just name it, Um, connecting to what other reasonable, typical human beings would feel in the situation and be capable of, and then to bring back kindness towards yourself about the fact that you're only human. So April, one thing that I know can happen to me and to many other people is that even though we know it's good to extend kindness to yourself and others, um, that negativity bias gets activated and we accidentally think others are doing more than they really are, or that others could handle this so much better. And then we feel shame. What do you say in order to help someone address that inappropriate shame? And I'm going to go on record agreeing with Bernie Brown, shame is just useless. So what do you Mm -hmm. say to that about how to tackle that? What kind of way should a, a mom approach that? There's a few directions that I would urge people to think about. So think about coming at this same, excuse me, the same problem from a number of directions. One of those directions is just societal. I want you to think about, you know, when somebody comes up to you in the, in the grocery store or, you know, in normal days when we could talk to mm-hmm. people in the grocery store and they would say, Oh, Hey, Hey, Karen, how are things going? You know, how are things going these days? And our knee jerk reaction is to say, Oh, great. So busy right? We wear it like it's a badge of honor that somehow there's something wrong with us 
or that we're deficient or lazy. If we Mm -hmm. say, you know, I'm just really relaxed. Like there's really not a whole lot going on right now. I just have a lot of time to myself and a lot of leisure. Who says that? No one does. Because even if it were true, they would be shamed. I mean, incredibly. So I want you to think about number one, the, the bias our society has toward telling people being busy is the right thing to do. Because what that does to us then is if we're not in that frantic state of just going, 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 we think something's wrong. We think that we're not doing enough and that just fuels the situation. So that's one lens that I want you to think about it from. Yeah. A completely different direction that I want you to think about. And I'm sure you've heard this a million times, but it's so relevant here that I'm going to bring up this cliche that social media is somebody else's highlight reel that you're comparing to your, you know, day to day life, right? Nobody puts well, aside from those amazing websites that show Pinterest fails, which high five to people mm-hmm. who created those websites, because yeah. finally something that looks human. But <laughs> social media has increasingly gotten more and more curated. There's more filters. There's more of an ability to edit photos and only put the you know perfect, amazing ones up there. Who goes mm-hmm. on their Insta story when their kid is screaming with them in the background and they're really frazzled and admits that they're not okay? No one does that. Because again, we think that we're going to experience shame and retribution from people around us. So just yeah. know that those are not the places to go to understand what common humanity is because every person around you is facing the same pressures. I better show up and look like I have it together or everyone else is going to judge me. And when, when they do that, they don't become the quote unquote common humanity that you want to connect to. Instead, I would urge you to think about and, and go get a, t- like a small post-it note, not the really big post-it notes, but get the smallest mm-hmm. one. That's like an inch by an inch or so. And I say to get the small one because I want this to be a tiny list of people. Get the three names, maybe the two names yeah. that you feel absolutely safe and secure as your group of people who will be honest with you. People who are in the same situation with similar challenges or a similar level of responsibility on them, get those people and connect to them. Have regular, open, honest conversations about what life is actually like. I have a couple mom friends. I don't do this in big mom groups. I don't do this in (laughs) um, on social media, but I have a couple really close mom friends who when things are hard, I'll actually reach out and say, we had a really tough day today. And Mm -hmm. these people will reflect back to me exactly what I said. Wow, that situation is extremely difficult. Holy cow, I've been in that before. I know how hard that is. And I reacted just like you did. So find that common humanity, but do it in an an intentional way, because you're not going to get it by just sort of passively consuming what you see around you. Because in the same way that your mind is biased, everybody else's are biased in the same direction too. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a a great way to put it. And I have those friends where, you know, the other day, uh, well, actually I'll speak about this morning. I was just having this freak out because my 19 year old, um, is someone who believes that violent revolution is the only way that society is going to change. And he's joined Antifa and he was so pleased to be handing out medical kits and gallons of milk and stuff to help people with tear gas during, you know, demonstrations. And I'm, of course, he's sending me these texts and I'm like, oh gosh, you know, he would be so happy to become a self-made martyr for the cause Um, (laughs) am I going to have a son and then alternately hoping, Mm -hmm. please arrest him. So he gets to see what it's really like. (laughs) You know, Mm -hmm. I want him to be in a jail cell full of stinky drunk people who are not all singing, you know, protest songs together with a overflowing toilet. So he gets a taste of this. Um, and I remember just reaching out to this friend and she was so helpful to just remind me, yeah, you know, when young men get to this age, they're like this. This is normal. 
And no, you didn't overlook something when you were raising him, Karen. This is just what they do, you know. I'm there with you. And it made such a difference. Um, We're going to take another station break here. And when we'll be back, we're talking to Dr. April Seifert about building psychological strength. I'm Dr. Karen Cassidy, your host on Moms Without Worry. And you're listening to BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio Live. Are you struggling to care for elderly parents or a spouse? Do you wonder if being a caregiver is making you sick? Are you worried about taking time off work to care for elderly parents and balance work, life, and caregiving? Has caregiving become exhausting and emotionally draining? Are you an aging adult who wants to remain independent, but you're not sure how? I'm Pamela D. Wilson. Join me for the Caring Generation radio show for caregivers and aging adults, Wednesday evenings, 6 Pacific, 7 Mountain, 8 Central, and 9 Eastern, where I answer these questions and share tips for managing stress, family relationships, health, well-being, and more. Podcasts and transcripts of The Caring Generation are on my website, PamelaDWilson.com plus my caregiving library, online caregiver support programs, and programs for corporations interested in supporting working caregivers. Help, hope, and support for caregivers is here on The Caring Generation and PamelaDWilson.com. There are artists and then there's Alice Asmar. This award-winning artist has spent her entire life devoted to her artistic pursuits and has had a lifelong fascination with American Indians of the southwestern United States. Her book, Dance to the Great Spirit, showcases her drawings and paintings inspired by sacred rituals of the Pueblo Indians, and four of her lithographs are in permanent collection at the National Museum of American History and the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. She is one of four artists in the United States to win a Woolley Fellowship for study in Paris at Le Colde Beaux Arts and has been featured in numerous publications. She's exhibited at the world's most prestigious museums and galleries and recently won a 20 year service award from the Burbank City Council and the inaugural art competition of the Foundation of the United States in Paris. Visit www.asmarart.com, www.aliceasmarinternational.com, and email alice at aliceasmar at aol.com. I'm Dr. Karen K. Today, your host on Moms Without Worry and Dr. April Seifert and I are helping you build psychological strength. So, April, could you tell us what else can mothers do to build psychological strength so they're up to the job? You know, I I love that you say it up to the job because uh, something that we talk about a lot in Peak Mind is that the work that we're doing it. It really is to equip you to handle the stressors and responsibilities of life because many of them, you can't get rid of them, right? You're not going to send your kids Mm -hmm. back. You can't get rid of your job. (laughs) You just need to make yourself stronger and better able to handle it. So I'll give you a couple um, of additional things to think about. Number one is think about, and this requires a lot of intentionality, but think about who you are as a person and in particular, what are your unique strengths? And there's an amazing uh, questionnaire out there that you can fill out. It's if you Google VIA strengths or VIA signature strengths, you can take a free assessment online. I think this is through Martin Seligman's group, but they'll show you what your signature strengths are. Get to know what those are. And I'll tell you why in a minute. And alongside that, Get to know what your personal values are. We actually have inside the Peak Mind Center, we have a free um, module that helps you get to know what your personal values are. It's this really fun card sort activity. But once you know those, and we're talking like you're making some ruthless cuts here. You're deciding between achievement versus family and some you know, pretty ruthless <laughs> cuts to get down to yeah. what your top five yeah. values are and what your signature strengths are. What I want people to get used to doing is reappraising the situations they're in based on how well did this align to my values and to what degree did it utilize my strengths? Because if you're misaligned with your values or you're not relying on your strengths, meaning you're relying on things you're not as good at, you're naturally going to feel some dissonance. You're naturally going to feel some misalignment. Things are going to be more difficult for you. You're going to feel less authentic. So I want you to get used to thinking about each of those circumstances from to what degree does this align to who I really am? If I'm being brutally honest, who I really am. So that's one. The second one, and this we could talk about for an hour in and of itself, Mm -hmm. 
but I want you to get used to thinking about your relationships around you and get used to looking for seeds of resentment in those relationships. And the reason why I want you to look for seeds of resentment, and this is one that, um, this is like a write this down kind of quote, but yeah. what we find is that resentment will grow where a boundary needs to be planted. So wow. we encourage people in peak mind to take radical responsibility for their life. Take 100% responsibility for 100% of the situations you're in. This doesn't mean you're at fault or to blame. This doesn't mean you control other people. All it means is here I am in the situation that I'm in. What can I do to move forward in a way that is true to me and in a way that feels good for me. And in relationships, when you start to see a signal of resentment or you start to see some of those negative feelings cropping up, you probably can't control that other, pe that other person. But what you can control is how much access they get to you. In what way do they get to have that access to you? H to what degree are you going to help them with the thing that they're asking for or as often as they might want you? I want you to think through, are there boundaries that need to be set there? Because that person is likely overstepping a boundary that they don't even realize should be there. So I'm, I'm kind of bouncing around a little bit, but I want you to have a really high level view of some of the really key components that we work with people on. It's things like self-compassion. It's things like alignment to values and to your strengths. It's stuff like boundaries. It's things like very intentional self-care. I could go on and on about how annoying I think the topic of self-care in social media is right now. It isn't <laughs> helpful for people. It's like one more thing they think they should do when in fact it should be activities that support you. We talk to our clients and our students about all of these different aspects because when you get good at practicing them in a way that is brutally honest and aligned to you, it's amazing how different your life experience feels because your mind naturally starts to work for you. It starts to become one of your biggest assets, not a barrier anymore. Yes, yes. I, I You have put that so articulately um, because I think, you know, one of the things you're talking about is taking the time and having the wisdom to identify who you really are versus who you think everybody thinks you should be or who your culture says you should, should be and honoring that. And, and I think one thing that happens to us when we have children is we, you know, there's the romance of motherhood and the romance of raising children. Um, but usually uh, after the first time you're sleep deprived within the first 24 hours, you know, reality hits and you start realizing somewhere in your body, this isn't so cool. <laughs> this actually mm -hmm. is very, very difficult. And, you know, and that's one reason um, I think we see parents doing this where, you know, on the one hand, they're saying, I hate all the tantrums my toddler has. But then they're conflicted about really setting limits and really doing a time out because they haven't done this alignment you're talking about. Um, mm -hmm. and they haven't, you know, realized, you know, actually as a mom, I got to have time away from my kids, uh, if I want to function. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, yeah. I just need to, to accept that. And even if, you know, the neighbor, uh, loves going on a three month vacation in an RV to, you know, with the homeschool kids across the country, I know for myself, if I did that, I think there'd be a bad, tragic news story about how I drove that RV off the Grand Canyon uh, to do us all in because it would be so miserable. And, uh, you know, and it's, it's tough to do that. And you, those are such great advice, uh, to do those kind of things. Um, you know, one thing I was so fortunate, my father was in the military and was this great leader and got a master's degree and, you know, studied all these things. And so I remember in junior high, him and in high school, him talking to me about this kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, what it means to lead out of your strengths and live out of your strengths. And I, I didn't realize till later, like, that's kind of an unusual daddy daughter talk to have, uh, mm -hmm. you know, with that, but, you know, what would you say to mothers, you know, where they're saying, um, you know, what if the things that I discover, you know, my strengths are, they aren't, they don't seem to be like, 
you know, really well suited to mothering or I just don't think they're cool. I would urge you to think about the variety of ways that you can mother. We Mm -hmm. tend to get, and this is, again, a topic for another hour probably, but we have one ideal, one prototype in our mind, and that is only one example. You can mother by being independent. You can mother by being strong. You can mother by leading in business. Kids need to learn all of those things. Why not learn them from you? Why not? Yes, that is so well said. Well, we're going to take one last station break here, and I want you to hang on because April is going to give you her three hottest tips for how you can build psychological strength so you really are up to the job of being a great mother your way. You are listening to BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio Live. What if there were a super tiny device that could diagnose the brain and is smaller than a single human hair? What if you could see inside the brain to help an epilepsy patient during surgery or to help the fight against Parkinson's disease? Dr. Patricia Broderick is proud to announce the Broderick Probe, a biomedical and electronic breakthrough. Imagine a probe to help with the understanding and potential cure of brain-related diseases. To learn more, listen live to the Easy Sense Radio Show with host Dr. Broderick, Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern on the Bold Brave Media Network and TuneIn Radio. And to help support the Broderick Foundation, please go to Easy easysense.com and learn how with your help we can fight these horrific brain disorders that's easysense.com to learn more and help support the broderick foundation WikiWags brings harmony back into your home for male dogs and their owners inventor and entrepreneur linda jangula has created the disposable doggy diaper wraps made with the male dog in mind The built-in wicking ability prevents rashing and other potential health issues for your dog. Each wrap comes in four sizes and has dual reattachable magic tabs for easy adjustments. And each size has a 7-inch logo strip for adjustability, so they are comfortable and easy to use. No more fuss, just leave the mess to us. Whether you're in or out, your dog will be free to run about. Stop cleaning and start enjoying your home, and you can even leave your dog alone. To order your WikiWags, visit WikiWags.com. Or to find out where to buy WikiWags in your town, visit MyWikiWags.com and start enjoying having man's best friend around. Welcome back to Moms Without Worry. I'm Dr. Karen Cassidy, your host with my special guest, Dr. April Seifert, who is an expert at helping people build psychological strength. And we've been talking today about different ways that you can up your game so that you really are capable and competent to be a great mom your way with the emphasis being using your strengths, your values and your skills and just not paying attention to how other people do it and comparing yourself unfavorably. So April, could you give our listeners a summary of sort of what are your three hottest tips that you want moms to have so that they can get on this path of building psychological strength. Absolutely. So let's go back to the very beginning of our time together. We talked about these negativity biases and the direction our mind goes that isn't so helpful, but it doesn't naturally. One of the easiest ways to combat that is to use your mind's natural tendency to develop habits and do things involuntarily, use it against itself. And by that, I mean, every day, I want you to practice gratitude. Don't roll your eyes. This is not an Instagram meme. I'm serious. What happens is if you're looking for something to be grateful for every single day, your brain will catch on and it'll say, wow, this is exhausting having me have to work so hard to look for something to be grateful for every day. And it'll kick in in the morning and say, well, she's going to make me look for something to be grateful for. I might as well start scanning for it right now. So I don't have to work so hard at the end of the day. It's going to kick in and be lazy and start looking for it for you. And imagine how amazing your life feels when you're constantly looking for things to be grateful for. This is almost like a magic pill. So that's number one, daily gratitude. Number two, I want you to get a jar and I want you to put a dollar in it every time you say the word should. From now on, you are not allowed to say the word should 
anymore because what this signals, and I love that you brought up Brene Brown, it signals that there is something that you're doing that is wrong or that is somehow against a rule or that we've all agreed that this is the way that things should be done and you're doing it differently. We talked about there's a million different ways to mother. The way to get yourself to see that your way of mothering is just fine is to drop the should. This will help you in every other domain of life, by the way, but it'll definitely help you recognize your place as a good mom. So a dollar every time you say the word should, and then last, do that practice of self-compassion. When you show up and you don't do it perfectly, I want you to acknowledge the circumstances you're in. Wow, this is hard. I want you to connect to a common humanity. Anybody else who's reasonable in this situation would feel that same way. And I want you to be kind to yourself. I'm going to do better next time. It's okay. There's always a second chance. So gratitude, ban the should, and practice self-compassion. I love it. Those are such powerful strategies. Moms, they're based on science. And if you dare to do this for the next 30 days, you will be so glad you did. So I want to let you know next week, we're going to have Kimberly Morrow, who's going to teach you powerful ways to coach your children to overcome challenges. April, I want to thank you for joining me today on Moms Without Worry and sharing your knowledge and experience. And it's always such a pleasure to talk to you and so inspiring and I'm so grateful and listeners April and I want to thank you for listening in today we wish you good help and we hope that you can stay on this journey to find purpose and joy and meaning in every day as we face the challenges of our lives by trying to live authentically by daring to build psychological strength with gratitude with getting rid of the unhelpful thinking and having deliberate self-compassion. We know that you are a beautiful example of one human being doing the best she can with what you have and raising children and learning how to coexist with other human beings who are also doing the best they can with what they have. We're in it together and we can do this together. So I hope you take the challenge by going to the Facebook group, Moms Without Worry Community, and downloading the challenge worksheet. And also post your comments and remember to like us. I wish you well. Goodbye. This is Dr. Karen Cassidy on Moms Without Worry. You've been listening to Moms Without Worry with your host, Dr. Karen Cassidy. Join the conversation each week as Karen provides a simple yet clear roadmap for helping parents strengthen the connection with their children on Karen Cassidy's Moms Without Worry. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.